I am Tom Smith. I'm with IBT's Safety Consulting Group. For some of you, we've been through this before, but for others of you, this is brand new. We're doing a couple of things. One, because you're forklift drivers, we have to train you to drive forklifts. If you've been trained in the past, okay, we're going to train you again because that's part of the requirement of the regulation. The other thing is we're going to create out of this session and the one we did this morning, we're going to uh, create a, a training video. Uh, part of the, part of the uh, you know, problems that IBT has, and it is a problem, they got 33 branches out there or, or somewhere in that neighborhood, and many of them have forklifts. And it's, it's almost financially impractical to get out there and train everybody. So what we're trying to do is create a, a means through a video that that can be used to train the guys out in the branches. So it does a couple of things. It makes it safer and also brings us into compliance with OSHA. So that's, that's part of it. And we'll be here about uh, oh, an hour or 50, 45, 50 minutes. And then I do need to give you a little uh, quiz at the end of the hour. Uh, we are required to verify that you went through this and that you learned something. So we'll do that. It's not a matter of pass fail. It's a matter that we need to record that you learned something. Uh, obviously, if you miss all of them, we'd probably be concerned, but uh, we, that becomes part of your record. Then also, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the schedule is for out in the, in the warehouse, but uh, the, the other half of the training is that you have to be observed driving by someone who's competent to observe you driving. And we're going to do that tomorrow. I don't know who and how many, but we'll get started on that. So over the next coming uh, days or weeks, whatever it turns out to be, uh, you will be asked to drive to demonstrate your skills. Again, it's not a matter of uh, pass-fail. It's a matter of demonstrating that you can drive a truck, fork truck, and if you need practice, that's recorded. And it's just like driving a car. How do you get better with a forklift? You get better by driving a forklift. So we'll be in, into that process also. If you operate all three of the vehicles that you have out there, then you have to be certified on all three of them, which is the, the, the uh, crown, reach truck, the tug, as well as the pallet jack. So all of those are powered industrial trucks. You have to be certified on all of them, okay? Questions before we get started, because I'm just gonna take you into powered industrial trucks. Give you a little bit of a digression here, because safety is important to everybody out there. It should be one of the things that we are always concerned about. So let me ask you, all right? What's your first priority when it comes to safety? Yes, sir? Self-safe. Taking care of you. All right, now look at this guy. Now, wouldn't you think that if you're walking down the street and you see three guys out there in a moon suit with air, uh, respiratory protection, it probably is not the wisest thing you could do to walk out there in this condition and observe what's going on, okay? So be thinking about my safety, all right? What's your second priority? Everybody working with you. Now, look at these four guys. You got three guys standing on the end of a two by 12 extending out over some kind of a drop-off, and a guy out here doing the work. Now, that's what is called a collectively dumb decision, okay? We all four got together and said, let's do this, but it's not smart. What's your third priority? How about taking care of company's equipment, company assets, right? You may recall about three or four years ago, the uh, Milwaukee Brewers were building a new stadium up in Milwaukee, and they had a crane collapse. The crane collapse was a $3 million crane that collapsed. And there were three people, I think, lost their lives. Okay. So they had to repair all of that, take care of all of that before they could finish up finishing the stadium. Now, protecting the company's assets is reality. In terms of forklift driving, you should be aware, drive it safely for you and how you operate it. Two, drive it safely for the people who work around you and with you. And then thirdly, don't run it into a pole because it does cost money if you tear one of them up. So those are your three priorities regarding safety. Now, as we get into forklift driving, we're, we're talking about a, an OSHA regulation. If you're not familiar with OSHA, you, you, you should be at to, to a certain extent. OSHA is the organization that determines and, and dictates to us that we have safe working environments. Wherever we work, it's supposed to be safe. So this is an OSHA regulation. People often ask me, do these regulations do any good? Over the years, have they helped us any? Well, I'll give, me, give you a couple of statistics. In 1970, when OSHA came along, there were about 95 million people in the workplace. In 1970, there were 14,000 deaths that occurred that year. Now, you come on down to the year 2000, all right? Matter of fact, the same last year, about that. But in the year 2010, excuse me, 2010, there were 135 million people in the workplace. So we're up about 40 million people, 
Okay? There were 5,900 deaths. We're down about 7,000, 8,000 deaths. Do they work? Yeah, they do. They really do work. They cause us to work differently. It is an employer's responsibility to develop a safety program and then train that safety program so everybody who works at that particular, for that particular employer can work in a safe manner. And that's what we're talking about here today. Now, a the definition of a, a forklift or a powered industrial truck is a mobile power propelled truck used to carry, push, pull, lift, stack, or tier materials. Okay? Now think about how you use those vehicles. That's exactly what you're doing. You're pushing, you're pulling, you're stacking them. They enable us to do our job in an easier manner. They enable us to lift things and move things that would take a lot longer if we were doing them by hand. They're commonly known as forklifts, pallet trucks, rider trucks, fork trucks, lift trucks, or heisters. Okay? That's the, all of the names by which we know them. And they can be powered through electric motors or internal combustion engines. It depends upon, again, the kind of environment you're in and the kind of purposes you have for your truck as to how you power them. I think out there they're both electrical. Do you have any... Uh, uh, propane powered here, they're all electrical here. Over in the gear shop, over on, the, on Merriam, there is one over there I think it's, it's propane. So they have a combination of the two. In terms of training, these are the kinds of things that we want to make sure that everybody understands when we, when we go through a session like this. Generally there are three areas. The first one is the general hazards that apply to the operation of all or most powered industrial trucks. There's some very common hazards in, in, in all trucks. Number one, they drive like a tricycle. And if you remember when you were a kid riding a tricycle, how easy it was to tip it over? That's the same concept that you get into here. Secondly, the hazard associated with the operation of a particular type of truck. Now again, if we go out there and look at the three that you have out there, each one of them represents a different kind of hazard, and we need to be aware of that. And then lastly, the hazards of the particular workplace where the vehicle operates. We'll end up showing you some pictures of the warehouse out here common to the things that you, you confront every day as you're driving a truck out there. Narrow aisles, things stacked here, and in many, in many cases they're not stacked the same place every day. They change, they move around a little bit. So those are the kinds of things we want to be aware of. When are you to be trained? Operators should be trained before operating a vehicle. Now that means you don't come to work and we say, okay, you're going to drive a forklift, so go out there and start driving it. Now come back, there are ways that you can do that, but if a guy's never had any experience with a fork truck, he should not be allowed to drive one until you go through some kind of a training session. Additional training may be needed if or when changes that affect safe operations. Now, changes in the area where the truck is, is operated. Again, you may have been here for a number of years, you're pretty comfortable where all the aisles are out there, but now you go off on vacation for a couple of weeks and you come back and while you're gone, they decided that they shifted a couple of aisles around. Now, that's where you need to be retrained, restated to you that, hey, things have changed since you've been gone. Or changes in the vehicle. If there's any changes, there are ways that you can add counterbalances to the truck, but it's got to be approved. So if they make changes like that, you need to be retrained on them. Then also, you go through some kind of a retraining session when operators be, had been involved in an accident. And what is an accident? Well, you, you ran over somebody, you ran into something, or something ran into you in operation of a, of a forklift. That's an accident. You have a near miss. What is a near miss? I was in a, one of our customers across town, and a guy was giving me a tour. We were going to come in and do some work. And uh, as we were walking down the aisle, the doors come bursting open, and a forklift came through. Now, if we hadn't been pretty quick, we would have been hit by the forklift. Now, that's a near miss. All right? That driver needed to be taken back and explained to him, you don't go through doors without caution. Go through slowly. Okay, so that if there's anybody on the other side, you don't hit them. But that's when you retrain. And then lastly, if there's substandard evaluation, what that means is, is when we go out and we watch you drive, if you're not performing the way you should, then maybe you've got to go back and you've got to go through some additional training. Now, my own personal philosophy is this. The only way you learn to drive a forklift is to drive a forklift. It's like driving a car. Okay, when you started out, you started driving it, didn't know much about it, and you got better as you went. The same thing with a forklift. It may well be that when you drive, if you're inexperienced, you don't do things that you will eventually do or you don't do them correctly. And I often will evaluate somebody and say, pass with need for additional practice under supervision. And what that means is that the supervisor should say, okay, I want, I want you to watch you drive some more. And he trains you. So if it's a substandard evaluation, then there's got to be some retraining. So that's a, a common way to go at it to improve your driving performance. Then every operator should be formally reevaluated every three years. Now that's what we're into here.
It's been that long since we had this kind of a session. And, that, and going back through this by regulation means that we're going to be in a session like this. We're going to talk through the concepts, and then we're going to go out and somebody's going to observe you drive. Again, I don't know exactly what that schedule will be, but in the coming days, that will happen. The regulation also allows for duplicative training, or duplicate training, if you will. Previous training and current competency of operators may be recognized. Now, some of you, I don't know what your background is, but if you were trained recently and feel that you don't need to go back through driver certification, you need to prove, somehow confirm that, and you may not have to do that. But notice what it says here. New employer must verify training and competency. So it may well be that we need a document or some other way to prove that you really are competent to drive a forklift. Sometimes it's just easier. It only takes about five to ten minutes to actually do it, so it's just easier to get on it and show everybody you can drive it, and then you go from there. You also will, will be certified. Employers are required to certify that all operators have received training. Now, what certifi certification amounts to is simply a piece of paper, a document. It simply gives your name, the company's name, the evaluator's name, and the date. So it's good in effect. It's a driver's license, good for three years from the date that you received it. All this material is to be retained along with the name and address of outside training contractors until, until the next required training session. So it goes in the file, the file stays there. 